Right, I'm Lucy Douglas, Head of MFL at Real High, and our project was involving uh, English and Welsh as well. And a lot of the language teachers, the MFL teachers, we teach Welsh as well. Um, our project is very much still in its infancy, a um, bit of a slow start, but it's driven on by the NDC data from last year, where um, for us it was very obvious that the boys do underperform to the girls, um, although most do meet or exceed their FFT targets. Um, and in addition to that, the fact that our reading ages are quite shocking, especially our current year seven, where um, 73%, yeah, 73 are six months behind, and one particular class of year sevens, their reading age is five years to seven, seven years, eight months, which is just incredible for us. We, just, we were shocked when that happened. So um, our lessons for that particular class in year seven have really been cut back to your target this lesson is to write one single word or to use one single word or sim a simple phrase. And for them to achieve that is quite a mir miracle. Um, so in key stage three, uh, ooh, shaking, God, I'm like Chris Maloney from X Factor. <laughs> <laughs> Why me? <laughs> um, so we're in key stage three, we have three written progress assessments during the year for people to redraft and improve. And like we've heard before, they're given a marking code rather than us correcting every word, they're given the codes at the side. And we expect them to work out where their mistakes are and for them to improve that way. Um, during those progression assessments, though, we do expect them to move up at least one level. Um, and in MFL and Welsh, we're particularly looking at the middle sets, the, the, the triple literacy project, um, those borderline pupils who are possibly going to get level five, and we hope we can keep pushing them to get level five in year eight and year nine. So that's the two middle sets. We have three sets per side of the year. Um, and in key stage four, and three and four, um, some of you may remember the talk project run by Janine Leith several years ago to try and encourage uh, natural conversation. Um, but we want to improve on this and we want to raise the levels and grades and the general literacy levels, building on those low reading ages. So we got this inspiration uh, in our, our inset day in March. Some of you may have seen this. It's not something developed by us. And this was handed to us, and you could see the buzz going around the language department. Going, Ooh, we could use that. A VCOP mat, yeah. Um, where you start at the top, and the, more, the further down the pyramid you work, the higher, the, the more complex your vocab becomes. Uh, there was something similar as well at the uh, challenged, um, MFL challenge strategies uh, in June as well. Um, so uh, we saw a possibility for this in all our languages. So in June and July, we created our own V-cropped triangles, like so. Um, but as you can see, it's quite plain and boring, um, uninspiring. And we had a few issues with the formatting um, and inherent printing costs, because uh, we were silly enough to do it in Word to start with. And our resources woman doesn't like Word. She's our, she's our publisher queen. Um, so. Also, to say to the pupils, now go and get, use your V-cropped triangle. It's not, it doesn't roll off the tongue, and uh, it's not going to work. So we revamped them. Um, so too much of a mouthful. And we wanted to bring the boys on board. As you saw, the, uh, the levels of the boys are that bit lower. We wanted to keep them encouraged. So we created our own power mats and power posters. And you'll see some examples in a second. I've got lots of laminated versions here. Um, and the word power, well, it's a bit like Red Bull, isn't it? And that's what they all seem to have for breakfast. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, Macro does its own version, power up. So uh, that was ideal for them. So we've got power mats and power posters. There's our French power mat, which I know has been seen in a recent uh, inset. The little um, boxes don't appear, but there's the actual version. It has got a, picture, a retro picture of Wonder Woman. Um, and because it's got Wonder Woman, we thought that might bring the boys on board. Um, so that's our French power mat, and this is designed as a, a table mat for all the pupils to have enough per class, and obviously some on cream as well, you know, so I've got a cream background. Everything has cream backgrounds because we have some pupils that can't do black and white. Um, and the, I'm not sure how clearly you can see the, the triangles, but they have uh, vocabulary, um, openers, questions, connectives, punctuation, and tenses. Um, and 
basically, just like you saw the previous V-Cop triangle, they've got to start at the top and we would expect them to gradually work down. And because they're laminated, the pupils can actually tick off on them um, as they use them in class. Um, and that could be used as self-assessment and peer assessment. Have you used that? Oh, let's see what we can go down on the next level to include in your next piece of work. So that's the, uh, the, top, the, uh, the mat for the table, the power mat for the table. And then that's an example of the English one, having worked across the departments. And these have all been translated into the, three different, the four different subjects because they're French, Spanish, Welsh and English. Um, so that, there's an A3 wall display. Um, there's the equivalent French one. Um, and we have the Welsh one as well. So don't use NACE, try one of the others. Don't use DIVLAS, try another one. Um, you know, is that banana? It is banana, yes. Um, so again, all these funny little characters, power, mark, power poster, power map. Teachers will be happier to say, look at the power poster rather than look at the VQOP poster. <laughs> okay, so there we've got um, the Spanish one as well with the Incredibles, trying to keep a little bit more up to date with some of the, um, the characters. So we intend to have these printed and laminated by Christmas and expect to start using them in January as well. And they'll also go on to Moodle um, so that it can be used at home. Um, our future developments, well we want to get data from the pupils, um, we want to do a questionnaire in December to evaluate their knowledge of the terms, um, we're not going to call them VCOP, well maybe we will, we're not. that's got to be discussed, um, and then how confident are they in producing sentences that contain all the VCOP content. Um, however we've got a stumbling block, if we want to actually do individual, get individual data from pupils, we can't do it at the moment because it then identifies teachers. So if we want to do a full class um, uh, data collection, then that's the way forward, like some other people have as well. Um, we're also going to do a parent questionnaire. Um, and we're going to explain why we're doing the triple literacy questionnaire in class. We're going to provide a copy of the English Power Mat to encourage them to take an interest in their child's literacy rather than it just being something in school, we want it to actually go home as well. Um, our transition, um, which is run by our Year 7 Progress Manager, who was a pupil of mine when I started at Real High, which is really scary. Um, so she's going to take them all into the feeder primaries, and hopefully they'll be used, and uh, that'll encourage them when they come in. We'll have to sort out what we're going to do with Year 7 Spanish, because she doesn't speak Spanish. I'll have to go and teach her again or something. And then school-wide, um, we want to roll out the power mats and the posters across all the subjects and have these all around the school. Thank you very much. <laughs>